San Francisco is a tale of two cities, a beautiful clash of modern and traditional. The Silicon Valley to the south, the heartbeat of the tech world pulses in the city's financial district. Just a few blocks away, San Francisco finds its urban roots and vibrant mission culture settled in the late 18th century. Today, we will explore both the financial and the mission district. My name is Brian McClintock. I am a master sommelier. Of all the wines I drink, none is more near and dear to my heart than Beaujolais. So what does a small group of wine growers have to do with one of the most innovative cities in the world? More than you'd think. With a recent return to a natural way of making wine, the newest wave of Beaujolais producers beg the question, what is modern and what is traditional? I want to start by popping into one of my favorite wine shops in the financial district at Flatiron Wine and Spirits, a retailer who has a whole wall dedicated to Beaujolais. Hi, how are you? Good. I need a producer, Anthony Tevenet. Of course we've got that guy. You've got that guy. Oh, yeah. There it is, 2014 Old Vines, Anthony Tevenet. Yes. Anthony Tevenet, he's a young guy in his late 20s. I'm kind of a poster child for the new wave of Beaujolais producers. Um, and I'm very, very excited to try this bottle. One of the first things that you'll notice is the color. There's a vibrant red ruby color. I'm smelling beautiful raspberries, cherries. There's a spiced element jumping from the glass. I smell florals. What's great about a wine like this is I know it'll be drinking well in 15 to 20 years, but it's so accessible and delicious right now. This is both earthy and fruity. The acidity is there, and when you have acidity, you have freshness. You have a wine that's vibrant and makes your mouth water. So I just want to drink more of this. There is no greater Burgundy and Beaujolais Mecca in San Francisco than RN74. In the center of the 7x7's financial district, this is ground zero for the tech world and home to one of the finest wine lists in the country. I have a, a special selection for you, my friend. Some uh, 15 uh, par degree. All right. There's only a few barrels of this wine made, so we're very lucky to be able to try it. This is from the 2015 vintage, which was one of the warmest and driest on record in Beaujolais. So you have a wine incredibly robust. Wow. And it's also super intense because this is the second crop. So the berries are very, very small. The juice is very, very intense. Wow, that is an incredible wine. And now for the finale, the Morris, a restaurant that's owned by one of the legendary sommeliers in San Francisco, Paul Einbahn. This is the place where I go when I want French-inspired cuisine and a deep, deep list of age Beaujolais. Hey, Brian. Here's the Metras 2010 Fleury Old Team. I'm having a nice day. Should be fun. So it says Tête de Cuvée with possibly the most recognizable label in the entire business. The color here is a lot lighter for a couple reasons. Number one, this is an older wine. And number two, we're in a cooler, higher elevation site. You get more of the floral, kind of softer, elegant characteristics of Beaujolais. That's honestly one of the best Matras wines I've had. It's gonna be perfect with the charcuterie. I'm happy. The only problem is... You don't have a chair. I we don't need have a chair. chair for this Where's gentleman. that? Can, can we get a chair? Can we get a chair? No. 